what is compression thinking and um, how can changing one's thought process help them with managing a business or just dealing with the complexity of everyday life? You can sum a lot of this up by how can we learn to do as well or much better and use a lot less stuff, energy and material. What does better mean to you? And that takes a lot of thinking. The Compression Institute would like to engage people in business to really think about what they do and why. And you may have to revise even the criteria by which you decide that you're successful. That's a huge shift. How can we improve the quality of people's lives? We have a few principles to go by. The first of which is, you know, the environmental messes we have are serious. You gotta take that into account, along with everything else. Quality over quantity, always. The objective is not to sell as much as you can. The objective is not to get the much, most revenue or profit you can. The objective is how do you improve the quality of what you do and the quality of life for the people you serve. What exactly do you mean by precautionary principles? The quality over quantity thing really asks you, looking forward, to engage in what time's called the precautionary principle. All that means is that the person taking action needs to be responsible as much as they can for the future consequences of what they do. And there's a lot behind that, but if, peop if people in business exercise that, they're going to give a lot more thought to what they do before they do it, and from many different points of view. How can a company use nature as a model? Does your company help nature, or does it tear up nature? Let's just recognize that nobody is perfect, nobody is perfectly aligned, but what can we do to get much better aligned with nature's business model, not ours that keeps tearing up the earth. What do you mean by vigorous learning? And so what's a very different way of thinking, we call it vigorous learning, that will let you cope with a much more complicated world in which environmental problems are serious and you have to think about how you benefit all your stakeholders, the ecology being one of them. But what about the people that supply you, the people in your communities, not to mention your customers? What is your role in the world and how is it going to change in a very different way to cope with the increasing environmental mess that we actually have? Will you contribute to the mess? Or are you contributing to fixing to the mass? In other words, are you helping to let the earth and its ecology heal itself? Or are you just intruding on it further? And so those are tough questions. What ideas can you get that are pretty practical that let you go in a very different way in the future from what you may have done in the past? How does compression thinking benefit managers and their employees? I think the benefit of thinking this way in a business is a much better psychological atmosphere for both the bosses and the people doing the work if you think of it that way. Because they, uh, one major thing about creating a learning organization is get rid of the fear. You know, make it comfortable for people to pose problems and questions and to actually do something with them. And when you have a fairly complicated business, you almost have to do that. You can't think of it as an old business where I'm the boss and you just do the work. That has never worked really well and it's working less and less well. And we've got to get away from it. So a part of this is what does it mean to be human? How do you connect with something that really grounds you or attaches you with Earth? And if you don't, what are the consequences ultimately? Are you just a robot in an artificial world? If it's something beyond mechanical, it's also living, which means it's changing all the time, and maybe we have a hard time keeping up with the changes. People in business will call that uncertainty. Uh, some of them will call it, how do I future-proof my business? Future-proofing? 
Is that even possible? Well, it isn't trying to stay fixed on what you're doing now. How do you set up so that you are highly flexible to adapt to whatever's going to come at you and you really are doing something that makes the world we see more resilient and a better place? That's a huge change. That's probably a values change and even what we think is success. And so the Compression Institute wants to help people in business or thinking about it dig pretty deeply into what they do and why and figure out how they can cope with this. How do you live better with less? Well, that's probably some kind of a values change in what we think better is. Find a way to think about all this complexity and cope with it in a way that allows you to do it and be sane and maybe if possible really enjoy your life in business or elsewhere. And so we'll call that compression thinking. We'd like to help you think your way through where we are, where we're going. Please come and engage with us in learning experiences, webinars, learning groups, reflections, whatever we can bring your way. Cut. Okay.